Welcome to a special episode of the Curse Checkpoint from HorribleNight.com for Thursday, December 12th, 2013, coming at you live on Horrible Nights, well, no, Twitch TV slash Horrible Night. I'm your host, Justin Lacey. Joined tonight for the first time this year, or this month, uh, Cole Monroe. <laughs> How the hell have you been, sir? I've been really good, really busy with work and all, and playing a lot of video games, um... I'm actually playing a lot more video games now that the PS4 is out. That that's um, that's but, been the funny part is like I've been just want I even outside of our show just been wanted like I know you've been gaming more often than you know this is probably one of your heaviest gaming quarters of the year and yeah absolutely I'm just anxious to talk to you about that so um, I wanted yeah, to get you on to talk about it I wanted to get you on before we start doing our Grimmy stuff just to get caught up know where know where Cole's head is at going into the games of the year. Um, but, but before that, uh, you're also a consumer of plenty of media, and uh, I haven't, I just haven't talked to a while, so what else has been going on? Well, um, let's see. What have I been watching? Saw the second Hunger Games. I really enjoyed that. Um, it was... It, I, I, I talked to Gar before, my wife before. We went to see it. I was like, I really hope it's like Empire. <laughs> but, you know the dark, the dark middle chapter, and it turned out to be really similar to Empire. So I was pretty pumped about that. Uh, we saw it in. Um, we have these luxury theaters in Las Vegas, two of them, where you have like the reclining seats. They have trays that oh, swing into you. Yeah. Um, you can pr- you can basically fall asleep. Like you're really comfortable the whole movie. I actually <laughs> fell asleep a little bit during Iron Man three when I saw it. <laughs> um, but they have they have like a bar there too, so you can drink beer and wine. Um, but we saw it on what they call DFX, which is like a huge screen and um, not IMAX, but right, but pretty big. And then they also have like speakers on the ceiling, like speakers all around it. it just, I want all it of these things. Better, it was just way better experience than any normal theater. Um, yeah. I actually actually saw Gravity in one of those theaters too, but we saw it in D box. <laughs> Which was fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah, those are all rumors. Of like, I think I had uh, to dra- yeah. travel to Chicago to check that out. I don't, I don't know if there's I, any D box in in Indy. I mean, I mean, D box is really fucking dumb. Well, I mean, let me be honest, <laughs> but like, I had to try it out after like Giant Bomb was talking about it all the time. Yeah. And man, it was pretty violent watching Gravity. Like, you get swung around and everything. So, huh. but I, I mean, I think you got to pick the right movie to go see it in D box for sure. So have you been? It was cool, yeah. How often do you go to the theaters? Oh, uh, we've probably I've only been maybe four times this year. Okay, um, yeah, because I, I saw say. Gravity, Hunger Games. Oh, five. Gravity, Hunger Games, Superman, Pacific Rim, and um, Iron Man Three. Those are the ones I've seen. Yeah. And so do you find uh, yourself just kind of waiting for the that movie? I need to like I need the theater experience for it. Yeah, I think. Yeah, pretty much. I, I want to go see those in the theater, but I, I love going to movies in the theater. Me too. And with that luxury, that luxury option is just so much better. Um, but it's just something that we just don't do that often, you know. But I, I still love it. I just, I just noticed a big shift in my, in my habits of, like, I ha- I'm not going to the theater as often anymore. And because of that, I'm kind of like hit this point where I've gotten a little bit offset with what's available for me to to stream. And yeah. what's in theaters? So like, I don't really miss anything because I'm still getting that. I'm like six months behind, but I'm getting a constant flow of new movies that I didn't run out to see. Yeah, exactly. So exactly. So yeah. the rush to go out to see the movie in theaters isn't isn't there anymore. And uh, um, but uh, what was the last movie I, I I finally saw Thor: Dark World a few weeks ago uh, with a buddy. But did you like it? Yeah, I loved it. I I like the I like the one off Marvel movies. I want them to do only those. <laughs> Did you like the first Thor? Yeah, but I think it's the weakest of all, at least, you know, this generation of Marvel stuff. I think that yeah. um, it was, like, the least entertaining, but this one had a lot more fun with itself, I think. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, I, was, I had a problem with the first Thor, and I think it's my fault because uh, I'd always fall asleep watching it. Like, I always start it, like, really late at night, and then I'd never get past a certain point. And so I watched that part like over and over again. I was just like, oh, this is. I finally watched the whole thing. I was just like, kind of down on it. But um, I like that character and Loki yeah. a lot. So yeah, I mean, yeah, they, I, just, yeah. I think it's uh, they can do. A, I think that movie it was one of my friends at work said it. It felt like Lord of the Rings meets Star Wars. 
Like it was. Oh, cool! And uh, it it when you see it, it kind of it kind of makes sense. It's just it it's very different than the others. So and uh, they've done a good job with that so far. I just wonder when when that magic will run out for for Marvel. Um, I had a uh, Ant-Man. Ant-Man. That's what's going to run. Out. <laughs> yeah, that is a. I don't know. That's what well, that's Edgar Wright though. He could have fun with that. Oh, well, that's true. Um, yeah. Uh, been a pretty big. I've been. I think I'm rotating like three shows right now, which is a lot for me. So my my weekly rotation of shows has been I'm still into Sleepy Hollow. Um, wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then Sons of Anarchy just wrapped up with. That show. Wait, did you did you did you watch the finale? Okay, I'm I'm a year, I'm a season behind. Oh, man, but did you watch the finale? Yes. All I will say is, while holy shit, while I um, I was kind of like I'm not really a Breaking Bad detractor. I have never seemed to be as obsessed with some of its as some of its fans, and I really came around in this last half season of like just recognizing how tight that show is and how awesome it is. Um, so Sons of An- Sons of Anarchy is my top five shows of all time. And now, like, it was just, like, the way everything came together with the Suns finale in this season, it is still my top show. It's just, like, I'm sorry, Breaking Bad fans. I, I'm i I'm all about the Suns. So. Yeah, see, for me, it's Suns. I still I'm, I still love Lost, even though, you know, whatever. Yeah. Uh, the Shield, Breaking Bad, and The Wire. Because like, The Shield, basically, this is a sequel to The Shield. If you've never watched The Shield, you should watch The Shield. So. The Sons of Anarchy is the sequel to The Shield. So when I start making you watch Justified, you're going to bump The Wire out of that list? That's too bad. Uh, no, I'll probably bump Lost. <laughs> I'd say, yeah, uh, Justified is, it's a. It's in a neck and neck battle with Breaking Bad at this point for me. I, I've heard Justified's really good, and since it took place in Kentucky <laughs> and I lived there for a while, it's going to be interesting. But I feel God like damn, Sons, Sons of Anarchy is so good. Yeah, I feel like uh, Aaron in chat represents the the Breaking Bad fans, and he needs to make his T-shirt from his "fuck bikes get meth" quote. <laughs> Should actually be a, a street fi- a street fight between Breaking Bad and Sons of Anarchy fans. Yeah, I mean, I, like, I'm, I'm a season behind because Netflix always posts a season behind in Sons of Anarchy, but um, as soon as I finish the season, I think I have the season finale of whatever, five, season five it is, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, once I'm done with that, I'm just going to buy season six. Cause nice. I, I mean, I know what happens, like, a couple episodes ago already, and I've been waiting for that moment for so long. <laughs> like, uh, it's going to be awesome, so. Yeah, it's been, it's good, been good TVing. Oh, and I forgot... Uh, American Horror Story, The Coven, still, still weird as ever, still awesome. Cool. I need to ch- I need to catch up with that show. Um, but you it, you you never warmed up to Sleepy Hollow. It sounds like. I never watched past the oh. first episode. There were just there was just bullshit that I could not get past. I, I I like it as my cheesy show. Like uh, I understand. Yeah, I totally understand that. I'm trying to think of what Do it, you like it. What it feels is it for. is it as cheesy as. Um, I cannot think of what it's well, called from, right now. The it's one, from it's Winchester from the, Brothers. Yeah, it's 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 cheesier than that. Like I, I I feel like which is surprising because it's on Fox and not CW. Right, but um, but I mean, it, I know it's from the creators of Fringe and stuff. Yeah, it feels like Fringe in the in that okay. a little bit. So um, and then I mean, the whole thing with that show is you either accept the the ludicrousness around Ichabod's character and like because they every episode has one or two jokes about. You know him acclimating himself to the 21st century. You know, and just oh, he's he's using the computer. That's that's really silly. And uh, talking about the internet, but I I don't know. I love this stuff. Actually, <laughs> this is um, it's actually re- filled in for Castle for me because I haven't been caught up on Castle. But it, that's okay. that's the the cheesy network show um, that has enough like geeky references that that I appreciate it. So yeah, I just think uh, Nathan Fillion has a lot more going for him. Than- sure. Whatever, sure. whatever Ichabrods. It doesn't have a magnetic character by any means, but it's it's sure. it's good enough, and I like I like demon related content. So more of that is good because honestly, because Supernatural just deals too much with angels anymore, and I'm over angels are just dicks. But <laughs> um, all right, let's 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 warm up game talk wise. One other thing I haven't been doing so. Horrible night. Cut. We, we've taken a little. We've taken a light December. We're gearing up for games of the year. Um, but ever since the uh, the charity marathon, things have been a little bit light on the content side, and that includes going over headlines, which we were um, doing on a weekly basis on our top video game podcast of the week. But we're retooling that show. And but I thought I'd 
just I want to talk games industry stuff because you and I like to keep an eye on things. So I've bookmarked um, several headlines here, and let's see what stands out in the last month. But is there anything top of mind for you before I dive in? Like just hot industry topics that uh, what what's been uh, kind of I mean just, kept, just catching despite, your attention. Despite the bullshit behind fanboyism behind like the new console releases. Um, the only thing that really stands out, or that I, you know, think of top of, off the top of my head, is like that notch could have worked for Valve at one time, <laughs> and that was that was just something that came out like this week, I think. Um, so I, I don't know, I can't really, I can't really remember um, my, anything outside of that until you jog my memory with some Sure, headlines. yeah, no, that that whole thing when I when I read that Notch was might have gone to Valve, I was like, well, he is kind of like, if anybody's in a position to be the next Gabe, he seems to it, be, yeah, for sure. He's kind of doing all this, doing his thing. He was on. Um, it was so bizarre. He jumped on. What's the late late show? The with Craig, uh, Craig Ferguson. Ferguson. That was. Yeah. I mean, did, you need to go back watch that interview. It's the most awkward thing ever, but it's awesome. Yeah, um, I love. I don't watch it all the time, and I haven't watched it in a long time. But I love Craig Ferguson because of just he's so weird, and his interview style is so f- weird and awkward and funny. Like I, I love it. <laughs> Matt, I'm gonna turn your. Uh, silly question from chat into something serious but he asks me what what's Lydia doing while she waits for me to come back to her in Skyrim um do you have any Cole do you have any like gaming any games this year that you uh wish you'd spent more time with because I I Ooh. fully intended to get through Skyrim uh this year but it, it hasn't happened I kind of kind of stopped I, I, I have a couple off the top of my head um Dishonored is one yeah yeah um, good call I restarted I started that one recently like maybe a month or two ago and I just got to a point I was just like got distracted by PS4 and other things um, sure but that game's pretty great also uh, The Witcher Witcher 2 I um, would throw in Witcher 2 as my my big one because yeah, that's my big one but I restarted I started playing it again this weekend so how many hours um, are you in? hopefully it, uh, Enough. I got almost to the I got almost to the point where I left off before um Almost. So I'm still in like the first area after the t- tutorial. Um, mm. but God, that game is so pretty. And yeah, I hope you stick so with fun. it. I hope it's we, so fun to play. We, I did too. We got to hold each other to that to get through that before Witcher yeah. Three. So yeah. Um, let's it's, see. It's such a huge game and so hard in some places, but it's cool. Let's see here. Uh, big what one. Car- Carmack left it for good. Uh, and, yeah, it, for sure. and then and then Doom sure. just went through its twentieth anniversary. Um, which reminded me yeah, that be- one of the few books I've read ever is I think it's called the map. Is it? That's not Masters of Doom. Hold on. There's a basically the uh, the biography of it. It software. Uh, Mas- yeah, it is called good. Masters of Doom. Huh. I thought that was the a uh, Master Levels of Doom is what I was thinking of. But um, uh, David Kushner's wrote actually written multiple books on Carmack and that whole story, but. End of an era, man. Yeah, that'll that. I'm not surprised by it since he had jumped on the um, Oculus, yeah, Oculus Rift, and it was just a matter of time, I think, before he left. And I, I think with it going under Bethesda, you know, maybe the writing was on the wall there. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty big deal. Mm-hmm. Too. Um, news out of Did you watch VGX? I didn't watch any of it. I'm kind of glad I did. I, I watched the trailer. I watched Witcher Three trailer. I think that's it. Yeah. Oh no, that uh, no, that Happy Game or Hello Games trailer, which looks fucking awesome. No, No Man's Sky. That yeah, No Man's Sky. Procedurally yeah. generated space combat game. Insane. Yeah, those are the two I watched. Yeah. Um, the big bummer out of that show, other than its uh, jokes falling on on their on their face. Uh, Destiny's launch date in fucking September of next year. Yeah. When's Titanfall supposed to come out? That's a March, March game, so I think they're getting out of the way, which yeah. business-wise makes a lot of sense, but for me, I'm not I'm not excited for Titanfall. I want to play Destiny, so come on, give it to me. Which one is exclusive? Well, PC and... Uh, Titanfall is exclusive both. to Xbone and PC. Destiny. Destiny has an exclusive beta on the uh, PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 3. Um, so they are edging a little bit towards Sony. I think Sony needs to lock that up. 
Yeah. But I don't think they will. <laughs> um, but uh, the more people I can play Destiny with, the better. So I don't, I don't really care. But that was, I mean, like I just, I don't know. I still, we'll talk about the PS4 a bit, but just looking out in the future, I don't, I still don't. Outside of Infamous Second Son, I don't really see that game that's. Uh, making me super excited about my console. Um, you know, Watch Dogs was supposed to be my launch title, but like seeing Watch Dogs and Destiny get pushed back. You know, Watch Dogs will be, I guess, spring, but um, I need another uh, I need another tent pole out there from Sony. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Both both the consoles they basically sold two million at this point, and they're both sold faster than any other consoles have. So, but it looks to be neck and neck. Um. Except, and I think, but I think stock is like replenishing in stores a lot faster too. Yeah, I mean, I th- it sounds like they had their, which it, you know, about a year ago, it didn't sound like they were worried they were gonna be if they're gonna be able to produce enough much con- enough consoles, but the manufacturing side seems to have been uh, handled handled all right. Um, I just I expected more more problems with not very many being available to start, but yeah, for sure. But they were able to sell like a million in 24 hours, both of them. Um, That's crazy. I'm still waiting to see. Like, I, th- they're they're not, you know, they tell their own stories when they release their numbers about the console sales. Um, you know, they spin it however they need to. But, um, you know, I, in the my circles of friends, everybody still just talks about the Xbox One. That seems like there's just oh really yeah it's that's all I've heard about is uh like the um. The guys going after new consoles uh, around me all talk about Xbox first, and I think it's I think oh, it comes from so. that that was their primary console last gen, and they just they're just gonna keep moving moving forward with it. But that's surprising. That's me. interesting. All, like all the guys that play at work that I've talked to, if they don't already have a PS4, there's one guy who has both. But if there's if they don't already have a PS4, all they're talking about is getting a PS4, mm-hmm. not, not Xbox. So. That's interesting. I and do. they're all 360 guys before um, oh, wow. these new consoles come out too. So. There are, there's also been some interesting, like, it's fun. As bad as E3 went for Microsoft, a lot of that stuff's kind of been pushed aside. But there are still, like, lingering rumors that aren't even necessarily true that are hanging with some people. Um, I was on a conversation this weekend that people were worried, like, I heard the 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 new Connect can detect how many people are in the room watching a movie. And if it's too many, they'll shut that movie down. And I was just like, kind of, kind of taken aback that that rumor got out there. Yeah, it's like it's all. I think that was something that they talked about like right. originally with the Connect, but it was never a fact or right. never implemented. It's like I'm sure it can track faces, but and I'm sure that's there if they need it, but it's definitely not not activated. So, right. All right. Um, where else? Oh, just there's an NBA 2K13 Space Jam mod just for the record. <laughs> Well, it's about time. Um, yeah. Well, it's breezing through the end of November here. Um, Telltale. That was the other, some other big news from BGX. First of all, react to Telltale Game of Thrones. Go. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I was, Walking Dead was, Walking Dead was good. I think it was... You know, despite the arguments, if it was a real game or not, like a, a game game, that doesn't matter mm-hmm. anymore. Like it was a cool piece of entertainment. Uh, the 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 Fables game looks really cool. I haven't played it. It's awesome. It's awesome. I read the first graphic novel and I was like, wow, this is cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, I bet that game is pretty sick with old BB Wolf. Um, <laughs> uh, but so like, I don't know. Like, if it's just going to tell the same story, I don't know if it's going to be as interesting. Um, I doubt they the tell branch, the same story. I about, I about it branches it. out, it tells different stories with different characters throughout, um, and they can make them as interesting as the Starks and the yeah. Lannisters and all those other characters. Like the Political intrigue gonna, game. Adventure we're game. We're probably going to get it, yeah. yeah. The political intrigue, sex with your relatives game. And then the game everybody wants from Telltale. Apparently they're doing a Borderlands game. <laughs> I don't get that at all. Because <laughs> we all go to Borderlands for the story. Did you see those picture that picture those renderings of the two D Borderlands? Oh like yeah, some, some the, like the side scroller one. Yeah, the yeah. side scroller one. Yeah. That looked that looked like it would be a lot of fun. 
I wish there was just a company out there just making demakes like that, just left and right. That'd be. Well, I mean, like it reminds me, like it could be like a Contra or a Metal Slug, you know, that kind of style of, but with Borderlands and those characters. And... Uh, I don't know. Mill has been into Borderlands too quite a bit. I think I got him excited, but yeah. So this new <laughs> Borderlands from Telltale, it'll play like The Walking Dead or an adventure game of theirs. So it's all story stories from the borderlands who who even knows what that means old handsome jack um let's see um starbound big release this week i've been playing a bit you interested why the fuck did i buy that yeah i bought it (laughs) (laughs) you don't have time for that this looks i know i was like wow this looks really cool all the all you all you guys bought it let me check what this is about Holy shit! I do not know how to play this yeah. game. Yeah, yeah, it's it's intimidating. How do how the fuck do you build a workbench? I'll have to find it, but there was a web cam- web comic going around, or it's either a web comic or a Twitter conversation. It was a Twitter conversation. Sorry, of a guy just basically like chatting with his friend, like I'm in Starbound. What do I do with this? What am I supposed to do? Blah blah blah. blah. It's like, is this how people feel when they play Minecraft? <laughs> yeah, I. It's actually got a better tutorial than the, the other those two games. Like I, it like gave me some goals a little bit, but I don't know. Yeah, I like chopped. I chopped up some dudes and I cut down some trees, mm-hmm. and I figured out how to suck up some dirt and then replant the dirt so I could use make it stairs. You made um, stairs. Other than that, yeah, so I could get to higher places I couldn't jump yeah. to. Um, but other than that, I was like, hi, <laughs> why did I do this? But I really like the look of it, and I like the premise, like the promise of it. You know, is it made by the Terraria guys, or is I think it one of the Terraria things? guys was okay. he's working on it. I think they split up. So if I remember right, oh, okay. um, th- I think that the other guy, I think he's working on Terraria too. So, Sweet. but I, I, it's I put more time into that than I've put into Terraria or Minecraft already. So I, I like it, but I got, I'm going to try to put it off for next year because it'll be a time sink, and I've got I've got games of the year to finish up. Or games of this year yeah. to finish up. Um, well, I don't. Let's not end this podcast before we talk about some tomb raiding. All right. Oh, sweet. Yeah, because I finished that as well. So, um, hey, how excited are you for the definitive edition? Let's rebuy it again for a PlayStation Four. What do you think? Uh, I don't <laughs> want to play it again. Kind of want to play it again. <laughs> I'm not gonna buy it. I have it on PC. It looks fine. Uh, let's see. Oh, so uh, The Walking Dead Season 2, that trailer came out today. Um, rumor is that it might the first episode might be out next week. Walking Dead? Yeah. Playing oh, at, shit, I still need, I need, to, I need to finish it. Yeah. it's. I'm not emotionally wet ready for it. But the surprise to me was that Fables, The Wolf Among Us, Episode 2, isn't going to come out till next year, next January. Like, I need to buy that. It's been so. a long, long wait for that. Um, yeah. But I, I, I can't be mad at them. I just wish they hadn't. You know, they honestly probably could have gotten by with just. I don't know. I was gonna say they could probably have gotten by this year with just going straight into The Walking Dead season two, and then releasing Wolf Among Us right after that. Like Telltale doing yeah. two games at once is still kind of weird. Yeah, like you think there's. I mean, you think their studio has grown enough in terms of people that they can yeah they have. I know they have two teams. Oh, that two teams. Yeah. Because now, which team? Now, which team is going to be working on Game of Thrones? You know. Yeah, I don't know. And I, and I thought they, thought there was another game they were working on too, but they've grown. I mean, they, especially after winning all the Games of the Year stuff, they're probably, uh, I've got some more tricks up their sleeve. But it just seems unnecessary. Like they're they could have, I don't know, planned that planned that a little better. I I bet Wolf Among Us was just supposed to come out sooner sooner than it did. Um, I really I. I really hope, for their sake, that they're not riding this wave, or you know, this wave of adventure game kind of style games, and do something different at some point to where they're not—they don't end up like a Sierra or a LucasArts, you know. Yeah, yeah. I think they, they they stop making interesting games. I mean, I had those concerns going into The Wolf Among Us. It plays much more like a detective story, which you know, actually is a lot like Sam and Max in that regard, but. Um, it was a departure enough from Walking Dead that um, gave me some more confidence in them. But um, uh, but they are, you know, taking on two more franchises. Will be they'll they'll have to mix things up a little bit. So um, 
I don't. I didn't watch this, but there is a headline that says Snoop Dogg endorses next gen Rayman Legends and release date trailer. So I need to check that out. Um, Snoop Dogg put his name to anything. Uh, yeah, he probably just got stoned and saw all the pretty colors and was like, yeah. All right. I think that's that's kind of what's been going on. I mean, most of the the, the news was around the the. The hardware releases, and speaking of which, you got a PlayStation Four. I don't think you and I have really talked about it. So, how's oh, the PlayStation? Haven't. How's your PlayStation Four doing? My PlayStation Four is doing awesome. I I got one of those ch- controller charging cradle things, which yeah. I love uh, for my two controllers. I will now buy one of those during the show. Keep going. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a pretty cool uh, little thing. Um, I actually got it at Best Buy. I don't know what brand it is anymore. Um, I really, I really love like everything about it. I haven't had any, well, I've had some connect connectivity issues in terms of like signing on the PlayStation store, like right away. Mm-hmm. Usually I'll just like back, back out and then log back in or, you know, connect back in and it's fine. Um, I have like five games and all I'm playing is NBA 2K. <laughs> I, that game won me over too. Um, God damn, that game is so much... It's so frustrating. I was talking to Andy online when he was streaming one time. I was in chat, which is awesome, too, because he was streaming. I was watching it on my PlayStation 4, and, I, I mean, the only part that sucked, I was typing in my text with my controller. <laughs> but whatever, like, the the ability to watch his stream and, like, have him talk to me while he was playing and I was watching was pretty awesome. Yeah, I mean, um, Twitch, uh, Twitch did a very smart thing there, and... It's too bad the Xbox but, didn't get that out. But God damn, that game could be so fun and so fr- so can we, so frustrating at the same time. Can we? And I'm assuming you're playing this too. Can we talk about the My Career mode? Yeah, that's all I've played. It is awesome and what te- terrible. What team did you get drafted by? Um, I got drafted by the Hawks, so I redid it and got um drafted by. I still didn't get drafted above the, the, the rival guy, even though I shut him down in that rookie game. Um, no, it wasn't the Timberwolves. I got interviewed by the Timberwolves, the Trailblazers. I haven't gone back to play since I got drafted, so not the Hawks. So oh, I the got, Pistons. I'm on the Pistons. Okay, okay I'm on the Kings. I'm on the bench for the Pistons. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 dropped, I, I had back-to-back games of, like, one had a 37-point game and then 25. I'm still coming off the bench. <laughs> And like it's so weird. Uh, okay, it's so weird. It's fun. I've requested a trade. The Pacers are interested. I'm hoping. Did you put them as your so so? Bef- Let's see. The, the The format of this is you get picked up off the street to get into the rookie game, like before the draft. And and I've spoke about this on my the other podcast of my first big problem. Even though there's no way around this, unless you make this like a huge RPG engine. They have obviously written one story for your character, and your character is only one archetype of a basketball player, which is an archetype that I that drove me away from basketball to begin with. He's just a little thug. Let's yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> and he's yep. a thug that wants to be like, no matter what type of player you are, he wants to be like the best player in the NBA. Like that is what he he is all about. Which is you know I get the motivation behind it, but it is it is weird, like playing as this personality that is kind of dictated for you um because they give you all like they give you little dialogue moments and you're talking with your agent you're trash talking with your rival um but yeah anyway you you play in the rookie game based on your performance uh you then go into pre-draft interviews with general managers of a handful of teams and then you actually sit there for uh the nba draft which is which is handled really well um yeah and um but yeah it it um it's still like i said it's it's fascinating but i feel like i'm watching it more as a train wreck than enjoying it yeah it's it's not it's not the strongest part of the game for sure um and like when you get into the game you talk to your gm over and over again and like dude bob from maintenance has had a birthday like three times (laughs) um he's asked me about my apartment and i should have a party like three times (laughs) Like, it's just, it's so dumb. Um, it is a soap opera. Aaron's right. It, it, yeah, it is. But when you get, like, and I've requested a trade, so, like, there's all the drama that's going on with that. 
Um, and but then again, like the basketball part of it it's is awesome. so good. It's awesome. It's so good um, that it's almost like worth putting up with kind of the shitty load times and that other stuff. Yeah, I, I, this, yeah, that stuff hasn't even bothered me. Um, yeah. So. One thing I noticed when I'm playing like exhibition games or games against friends, I'm using the you know the typical sideline TV camera angle. Yep. When it loaded up that rookie game, it did the behind the basket type cam, following you up and down the floor because you're really only the one guy. You're not switching between players. Do you? Yep. Which camera do you use for your career? So I start. I started off with uh, the behind the basket camera. Yeah. Um, but then, like, when I watched the Andy stream, I was like, oh, I didn't even think about changing the camera angle yeah. until I saw his. And so I changed it to the sideline, like, TV presentation. Okay. And I've, I started I started playing much better. I don't know. Like, I like playing defense in that uh, in that behind the behind the back camera, basically. But uh, it, uh, yeah. it brought back some some AAU memories. So. Um, oh, yeah, definitely. I think about that kind of stuff all the time We're about high school and boys club and all that stuff. So. But, yeah, I bought um, – so I bought FIFA – it's fine, but it's not very next gen to me. But so okay. playing NBA 2K14, that was the leap I was looking for, and it's been so long since I played a basketball game. And they, they, yeah, and everything gorgeous. everybody said about it, it, it is, it is probably the best sports game out there. Like it is. Yeah, I think probably besides NHL hockey, um, if that's still good, I don't know. <laughs> not, but um, last couple of years it was pretty good. Um, yeah. So, what other games do you have? Um, let's see, what do I have? Uh, still love Rezogun, um, but people have talked about that, so I picked up Killzone, um, yeah. played a good chunk of it, but I played enough of it for this year, I want to go back and finish it, but I, I like that game a lot more than I thought I would. I, I barely played it. It's, um... Uh, Just had other things. It's got a little bit more, like, the combat in it is much more open, open world, open area, like more of a Halo type yeah. of battle scenario, like guys coming in from different angles and you have to use different tactics on it. And I didn't really expect that. And uh, one of the main weapons is really satisfying to use because it kind of just like almost explodes guys. Um, and I, I've heard the, you know, the story. I don't, I don't care, but it looks gorgeous. It gave me my next gen moment, just some of its skyline stuff. And yeah, it's, um, it's fine. Game, it's sure. fine. Yeah. Um, I still think, I still think, neither console has a system seller on it, and the launch lineups are, um, they're not great. Uh, there's no reason to rush out and buy one kind of thing. So, yeah. What else um, did I get? So yeah, um, I got I got Killzone. I got uh, what's? Did you get Knack? I did not get Knack. So tell me about Knack because Andy okay. hates it more than any person on the planet. It's the only opinion I've heard, and you're yeah probably more reasonable with your opinion here. Yeah, I think, like, and Jason hates it. I don't even know if he's seen yeah. it before. Um, I don't hate it. It's It reminds me of, it's not a next-gen game. Like, it's not a current, you know, whatever. It's, it it's a PlayStation it, 1 character-driven platformer. Exactly. Graphically, yeah, it's pretty good looking. Um, there are some issues there, but um, it's, yeah, it's, it's just a platformy sort of action brawler. Um, it's it's fine. It's like I think if you played it around Lily, she would love it. Yeah. Um, like she would really love it. Uh, the voice acting for Knack is terrible. <laughs> uh, like the the voice acting, the acting part is fine. The voice is just totally wrong for the character. Um, I don't. I mean, I don't even really want to get into it. Sure. But. Um, but you found you found some fun in it. Yeah, it's it's fun. Um, it's also like like it reminds me. It's very frustrating because uh, the checkpoints, while pretty liberal, like sometimes they're they set you back pretty far. So when you die, you get set back pretty far. And, and some parts are kind of difficult. Mm-hmm. It reminds me of like a, like a double dragon or an edge gate or something like that. Really? Wow. Just not not like that good, but some of the difficulty and like frustrating difficulty where you're oh, with the controller. Bad. Yeah, um, but yeah, it's it's fine. It's am I gonna am I am gonna look back, you know, eight years from now and think fondly on the game? No, I'm just be like, wow, that's I can't believe I bought that. But you had to buy something, man. 
I had to buy something. I almost, it's fine. I almost it's fine. ended up with Need for Speed Rivals. I almost ended up with what else was I juggling there? Um, I almost. So got I bought Ask Ask. I bought Ask Free and Battlefield Four That's as well. That's it. Have you been? So you've been played. Been playing some pirates on the PlayStation Yeah, I, I think I got. I think I'm in Nassau right now. Um, yeah. So I'm not like too deep yeah. into it. Uh, but that is a that's a pretty looking game. Uh, oh no, I know where I'm. No, I know where I'm at. I'm at the the ship, the first like major ship part where you have to blow up ships for metal. And mm-hmm. I got s- so pissed off because I get so close to destroying the last ship full of metal, full of metal and then another big old yep. ship comes in and just blows the shit out. I of me. literally, so little. I turned it off and I haven't played since. <laughs> I literally streamed that last night, and one thing, one of the things I appreciate about that game is that. Uh, I am terrible. I'm a terrible boat driver, as I've been saying. Oh, I'm and, terrible um, too. I can use all of these horrible tactics, but honestly, when you die, at least on the boat, I don't really know what the penalty is. You just kind of start over somewhere else, and I'm sure you lose yeah. some stuff. But I just get right back out there, and but yeah, that's the that's the big thing. You get into a a, a battle with one of the big ships. Usually another big ship has showed up by the end of that battle, and uh, it gets pretty hectic. But it's oh my god, the game is fun. I am I am all in for Pirates Creed. I am all yeah, in. Yeah, I think it's I think it's uh it's it's definitely refreshing to get back into it. I haven't played anything really since two. I finished two and then played a little bit of Brotherhood. I think <laughs> and I, I, I kind of got gave up. But you've um, played what you need the, to play. <laughs> Yeah, the new setting. I read all the endings of the previous Assassin's Creed. And yep. Found out what happened before I dove into this one. Yeah, it doesn't matter. So. It doesn't matter at all. <laughs> no, I was hoping it would matter, but it doesn't <laughs> at all. Yeah, I'm good. I I hope they've let that go as much as we all have. So, um, anything else like hardware wise, the PS PS4? You said in chat you love the DualShock oh, uh, Four. How do your How do I your do giant like- hands feel about the DualShock Four? I like it a lot. The triggers are way better than three for sure. I mean, I pretty much feel like everybody's has everybody said um, previously. Mm-hmm. Um, the hands feel fine. I kind of want to. I kind of wish it would work better with Steam because I would just switch to it all the time. It'll get there. Um, yeah, but so I still have my 360 controller for Steam. But I, I would, I would totally switch. Yep. Um, I like being able to go back and forth. Like I, I'm not a. Um... Yeah, I don't I'm have not, a agnostic. You can't, yeah, you can't make me upset about moving my moving the stick up or down. So I'm fine with yeah. either control. I have not held an Xbox One controller yet. And uh, okay, so I went to the store. I was at Fry's and I, they had a demo unit, and I I put my hands on it. Honestly, I did not like it. Hmm. I like the sticks were too high. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, interesting. The uh, the the, uh, the bumpers, I just didn't like it. So. Mm-hmm. Do you like if it, in the future? I mean, I would stay with the 360 controller for Steam. I would not move to the Xbox. Yep. Or you know, I'd go PS4 if that's made available. Gotcha. For sure. Gotcha. Anything else about the uh, uh, interface hardware? Any just general PlayStation 4 yeah, ownership s- stuff? Well, so um, I never had my PS3 hooked up to a 1080p TV. It was always 720. Yeah. And so I started streaming Netflix on my PS4. Holy shit! To my computer monitor, which is 1080p. <laughs> Holy shit, like it looks fucking good. Welcome to 2010. <laughs> yeah, 2010. Yeah, it looks really good. That's um, awesome. So I watched a little bit of Netflix on there. But I, yeah, I mean, like the interface is fine. I, it'll be interesting to see what happens in the future. Mm-hmm. Um, right now, it's I think it's in a good spot. Yeah, I'll be curious to see. Had they it, didn't really had issues. You know, update the PlayStation 3 interface too much. I mean, especially when compared to Microsoft, but I wonder if they have some tricks up their sleeve for that. So. Oh, one thing I, I did notice is uh, the I forget what is it HDCP um, yeah thing that Sony has on their thing that you can't out, you have to output directly to a TV you can't have any like intermediaries go yeah. in between. So I have a HDMI switcher because um, my port my TV only has two ports. So um, I was hoping to use that couldn't use it. Oh, so, that's a shame. Um, that was that was kind of disappointing, but. I just moved my PC and my Wii U to the switcher, and that's fine. Yeah, that actually, that HDT, HDCP stuff gets in the way of uh, streaming as well. Sure, Same kind sure. of. Well, uh, I think they're going to patch it out. Yes, so. they're patching out in the spring. So that, so that'll be cool. Yep. Um, and then I guess is the Xbox box 
<laughs> Xbox One on the horizon for you at all in the next year? Curiosity uh, about that. So, I, I don't think so. <laughs> I I'm I'm wondering if I'm ever going to get one. Honestly, at this point, like I know I'm an idiot because I probably will at some point, and saying that is just really stupid. Um, but I have a PC now, and pretty much any of the any of the games come out for PC that I want to play. Um, and I'm not like so locked into their exclusive games. Yep. Um, the one like Timefall I'm interested in, but it's coming for PC. Um, yep. So no interest really. What totally, totally understand that. Cause I keep like, even when I have a multi-platform release, I'm still leaning towards the PC side, but like, like Sony's stable of uh, exclusive games, Microsoft doesn't really have the draw for me quite yet, but I, st- I, I will probably get one in the spring uh, just to have one just because, I don't know, some of their, their other stuff they're doing that is interesting and um, I can always find games and who knows where we'll be at this point next year. Just really curious to see how yeah, that all Yeah, that's true. That all I'm just out. not, yeah, yeah, and like the other stuff that they have is just not appealing to me right now. So I think if I was more interested in the TV side, um, there would be a bigger draw, but <laughs> right now there's not. <laughs> um, I got too much shit on my TV as it is. Yeah. So have you, Aaron and I? Well, we did a so we did a uh, games of the year preview, and okay. we're going through like all the releases from Nintendo and like looking back at like, holy shit, the 3DS had an awesome year, and then we had all we had a pretty yeah. major Wii U release. What's going yeah. on with Nintendo in your life in the in the last month? Well, uh, been playing some. Link, uh, what's it called? Link Between, Between Worlds. Worlds. Link Between Worlds. Wow, talking about hitting every nostalgia button in my body. Um, I'm I'm loving that game. Um, I just I just got to the low rule, so mm-hmm. <laughs> still pretty early on. Still pretty early on. Um, yep. Enjoying it though so far. But yeah, there's a lot of um, great games um, for Nintendo. I'm hoping to get the Mar- Cat Mario for Christmas. Okay. Okay. I didn't know. So if, I held out. I held out on buying that. Um, I was surprised. I was surprised you could do that because your your wife loves loves her some Mario games. She does, and I showed it to her. I was like, "Hey, Mario's in a cat suit," and she was like, "Oh, that's awesome." But her issue with Mario um, Mario games is like she likes the two D ones because mm-hmm. she can follow the action, and she's like, I, she's just not good with the three D. My my like, fiance had the same stuff. concerns, and she has beat the game, and I have it. So. Oh, okay. okay. Well then. <laughs> I told her we could play together, so she I showed she looked, she was excited about the trailer. Uh, cool, but I like getting Nintendo games for Christmas. So. <laughs> that's that's really funny and really, uh, I totally know know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, I said the other day. I said I, I said the other day. So I I I finished Link Between Worlds this weekend, but I like kind of went heads down on it, and I was just yeah. I just said there's just something right about playing Nintendo games like during December, during the holiday season. I always associate Zelda with Thanksgiving because of Ocarina yeah, of Time. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Like every time a Zelda game comes out, it comes out right before Thanksgiving and I can't play it because I'm having to like spend time with family. And so, um, and this happened again with Link Between Worlds. Um, I did, um, I, I, I did find one flaw in Link Between Worlds and that is when I was done, I no longer had a new Zelda game to play. <laughs> But that's all I've come up with. So, so it's so it's good. Yeah, it's overall. Yeah, it's. it's I found myself getting stuck in some spots. Yeah, there. and that's like, awesome. Whoa, whoa. I like yeah, being it stuck. Is awesome. <laughs> no, I do too. Especially in that game, I didn't want to jam through it. And I was just like, oh my god, like I expected this to be like easy, 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 and it's <laughs> not. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I look forward to seeing your reaction to Super Mario 3D World once you get get your hand on hands on it because. That game so is cool. so another fantastic. another cool another cool thing uh, with Nintendo is um, one of my friends has actually applied for a job there. Oh, nice! And had an interview, had an interview, and like took a picture and sent it to me that she was there. So I was like, "Well, if you get a job there, <laughs> so, uh, so we could open the floodgates of people. Yeah, <laughs> that might want to be involved. Yeah, no, so that's been pretty cool too. Like exciting. Cool. Uh, anything else? Do you want to shout out Nintendo wise, or you want to move on to uh, everything else? Man, the three. I just want to say the 3ds had a great year. Um, mm-hmm. With uh, oh man, I'm drawing a blank now. The, <laughs> the Batman Arkham Origins Blackgate. That's what you're going to talk about. 
Blackgate, I was thinking about getting it for Vita instead. Um, I haven't got it, though. No, the... Uh, what's the turn-based strategy? Fire Between? Emblem? Fire Emblem, yeah. That mm-hmm. came out earlier this year, so... Yep. And then the Pokemans, they had a good year. Yeah, uh, good year. so Aaron's been throwing... He's been saying, like, guys, I need someone to actually put some consideration behind the Pokemons. Um, and I don't know who can support them in that, because I don't, I don't know, I don't feel like I have the background for it since I've ever played one to compare it, but he's saying it's, like, he's saying it's legit, man. Saying I feel like, I feel like we aged out. Uh, yeah, well, I missed it by two years. I missed that and Power right. Rangers and, um, See, I got into the Power next Rangers. gen of Nickelodeon. Yeah. <laughs> Which, by the way, all the Are You Afraid of the Darks are on Amazon Prime streaming. <laughs> just want to throw that out there. Um, but yeah, like I feel like if I played Pokemon, I would just be like, no, this isn't for me. Have you played any of the Ace Attorney games? That's the other one we've been going on. No, I haven't at all. I haven't. Might be played some Layton's. Layton's, but no Ace Attorney's. Gotcha. Um, I, feel, I feel like my wife would like Ace Attorney. Yeah. Objection. Um, yeah. Speaking of Vita, you play anything on the Vita? Or is it just looking sexy next to you? It's just looking sexy. <laughs> uh, I tried to play some uh, Black Flag on it. Yeah. Streaming for my it's PS4. Uh, it looked great. Oh, I did cool. not like the controls, though. Yeah, it kind of um, it's missing a couple buttons, so... Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't really play that much on it, honestly. It's... Um, what, just, what just came out for it? There was another free game that I was excited about. Shit. I don't remember. But Splunky's supposed to be awesome on it. Um, but I do have Spelunky. It is awesome. And some of that and now cr- they have uh, cross by shit. They have the daily, they have the daily challenges too. Did you get Dragon's Crown? Nope. Do you have interest in Dragon's Crown? I think it looks cool, but I don't have any interest okay. in it. All right, fair enough. All right, what what so what have you been doing on your PC to wrap this up? Uh, PC. I bought a shit ton of games last week. Um, Starbound. Mm-hmm. Hey, let me open up Steam real quick to. <laughs> uh, Starbound. I bought. Uh, come on, Steamy. Come on, Steamy. What else did I Tell get? Tell me what I've um, been doing. I didn't buy Final Fantasy VIII, uh, which is surprising, because <laughs> since it's on a new, um, since it's on a new, we, whatever. We talked about it before the show, uh, but fuck that game. Yeah. Um, the most oh, you know what? I, I, we, so you kind of made fun of me for playing Rocksmith and uh, Final Fantasy tell me, IX. Okay, tell uh, me about Rocksmith. Ago. Okay, tell me about Rocksmith. Okay, so um, I would have never bought Rocksmith if one of my coworkers hadn't bought it and told me it was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I, we bought the first. I bought the first one. He ended up buying the second one and saying it's way better than the first one. Mm-hmm. But um, it's 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 hard. <laughs> um, so you plug your guitar in, and then Any guitar. you basically have to... Any guitar. It, yeah, well, electric guitar. Okay. It could be electric guitar. I have an electric acoustic, so I plug that in. The one bad thing about that is you can hear the acoustic um, strings before you can hear it on your headphones, because I've, I've been playing on my headphones. Mm-hmm. So there's a little bit of delay there, um, but it's not it's not enough to where it's it's affecting the gameplay. But it's act, it actually helps you learn how to play guitar better and play songs and, like... Um, get your fingers into shape and all that stuff. And it's like, I was really surprised of how, um, there, how uh, elaborate it was, honestly. A couple guys in my office have been talking about it because one of them that's in a band currently said, um, ever since I got this game, I am practicing more than I ever have because it just encourages you to do so. And It does, yeah. Um, it sounds like it's a decent teacher, but also should appeal to any anyone w- that can play guitar and has a passing interest in and and staying up on that it sounds really because it's gotten it's gotten really great buzz for a game that i thought was going to come and go and then they released another one and everybody's starting to talk about it and it's on pc now it's on uh it's on everything yeah i've been so. playing on p yeah i've been playing on pc yeah. um so yeah it's interesting and then i i, I downloaded final fantasy 9 on the vita and I, that's the last game i really played on there mm-hmm. um so i also bought tiny barbarian good choice which is awesome Yes. Which is fucking hard, but awesome. Uh, especially those goddamn bats. <laughs> uh, bought Mass Effect 3 on Origin, because it was like, or on Amazon, because it was like five bucks uh, a couple weeks ago. I heard that and was a really good that. game last year. Like, there's yeah, a couple websites that said, hey, 
You should play it. Still haven't fi- still have still haven't finished it. Yeah. Uh, That's okay. <laughs> haven't played haven't played it on my PC at all. I still have a save on the Xbox, but I might just start over. I bought Mass Effect One and Two because you know why not for you know for uh, historical reasons I needed it. On Steam. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's I think that's it. Um, and then you've been playing The Witcher Two. Started The Witcher Two this weekend again. Uh, probably played four or five hours of it this weekend, and it's a really hard game to like set down and pick back up because there's so much going on mm-hmm. uh, in terms of like the controls and like what your spells are and all that stuff. So I kind of want to just get a refresher on it uh, and, and try to get past where I was before. Um, I think everybody should play the Witcher. I yeah. think, I think it's the most underrated series want... of this generation. Can oh, throw, absolutely. Can I throw out extravagant think... phrases that I, uh, on a game I haven't played? Yeah. I, it's what I wish Skyrim could be. Oh, Wow. <laughs> like for for me, not yeah, for everybody, yeah. but for me, like The Witcher Two is what I want Skyrim to be. Um, well, I think isn't The Witcher so, Three trying to be more Skyrim? So that'll be interesting. I think so. Yeah, yeah. But I, I just like I love the control. I love the. It's a. It's graphically. It's gorgeous. Like it's so pretty, um, and just like the storyline is really good. The voice acting is amazing. Like. I, it's really, I think, underrated or, you know, I mean, for as cheap as it is on Steam all the time, like, everybody should own it. <laughs> uh, I can't wait to, once one of us has put more than ten hours into it. I think Aaron has. Yeah. But, I yeah, I don't, I don't know why I didn't make it into my queue this year, but I need to make a, I've decided I need to make a list for games I have to play those first, the for the next three months when, um, Nothing news come out, you know, and yeah, like to kick off next year, I need to finish some 2012 games and uh, before it uh, it gets too far. So yeah, for sure. You, uh, what were you playing before The Witcher? Uh, a lot of P- PS4 okay. actually. Um, okay. On Steam though, let's see. Played Saints Row Four, never finished it. Kind of just got tired of it, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, else i mean earlier this year we can talk about tomb raider if you want to let's have a tomb raider moment because we haven't talked since i went back since and beat you it. finally since you finally finished it and we need to talk about bioshock infinite as well if you finished okay. it yet yes we can do that uh no. so tomb raider so should we get in like what my top games of the year are because we're i mean those are the games i want i want you to throw them out there because yeah we, we kind of had our other discussion but i need you to oh color I, it a little i also bit. bought I also bought Brothers um, last week and played about two hours of it, I think. So You're so close to being done. To, yeah, I had to go somewhere out. Oh, man. I, I, really, I really enjoy that game. You're not allowed uh, to be a part of our Grimmies conversation if you haven't played Brothers. That's a rule. I'll fin- I will finish it <laughs> this weekend. I'm not saying it's going it to win Game of the Year, but God, it's that's a goddamn video game. Uh, I, yeah, I wonder how close I am. Um, so Tomb Raider. So, so Tomb Raider. What would it. you like to say since you wrote about three editorials on it that never <laughs> never posted? Yeah, uh, like Tomb Raider scratches an itch within me that like the Uncharted series does, which I need to go back and play. <laughs> uh, just any adventure games like that, even old too. Like Tomb Raider Legend was like the first Tomb Raider I really loved. I think it was Legend <laughs> um, on the original Xbox, and mm-hmm. then this, oh, dude, like. Everything it's not it's not a traditional Tomb Raider game. It's more Uncharted influenced, which is fine. Uh, that girl takes a crazy beating, um, but like all that, like I think it was just really well written. Uh, it was interesting, like it stayed interesting. The combat was interesting the whole time through. Um, even like I don't know, like I I, I wish this makes me sound crazy, but I, I wish like. There were stuff like that in the world now that you could go and find. <laughs> no, I know. I mean, I, just, I love the adventure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and I love when it's just thinking about it. loosely yeah. grounded in reality. Like, yeah, that I, that's why I play those games. I, yeah. That will be forever my favorite genre. Like that action adventure hybrid, character driven, 
Um, and yeah, there was, um, I said, I, I, so I, I think I live streamed the last two thirds of that game after I finally went back to it. And that game took a turn for the awesome. And yeah, it was just a lot more fun to play than I could have ever expected. Um, yeah, that's, that's the thing. It was so much fun. It was hard to put down. Um, every time I put it down, really I wanted well. to get back. Yeah. Like I even went back and tried to like get everything in it. Uh, really? Just because it was after, after I finished that. It, it was structured really well for that for sure. Yeah, it was. And you could jump back and forth and it looks so good on PC. Yep. Um, and, and honestly, like, like Assassin's Creed Black Flag on PS4 has kind of that same, to me, has the same kind of like grainy look to it that Tomb Raider did mm-hmm. that I really enjoy. Yeah, it's, 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 they it's went for, they went for that. grit and they, they nailed it. And, um, they nailed it, yeah. the only thing that holds Tomb Raider back in my mind is like my, just my balls out fun to play action game of the year. Um, which came out right before it was Devil May Cry, and uh, it's just when I compare those games, um, I'm gonna always lean towards Devil May Cry. But Tomb Raider was still a huge surprise. Like I thought, I thought I knew what to expect from that game, um, just the way they kind of you know, the marketing for it was so in your face, and I yeah. so I knew what they were gonna do to Laura, and I'm really I couldn't be more excited to see what they do next. Like because I don't like did they really like you know kind of break down this character and then rebuild her as, uh, you know, a, a, a true explorer and a tough adventurer and all that. And I want to see that pay off because the arc for that character in this game was fantastic. Um, and just really, like, I mean, it worked. I was really connected with that character. Like, it just, I, I felt every, every little piece of pain that she went through. Oh, my God. When there's, like, when like, going down the... Going down the waterfalls and like missing the correct button and that stick just goes through your face like, <laughs> oh my god, dude, yeah. it was so rough to watch sometimes. Yeah. But yeah, I yeah, still like uh, some of, some of it. I I and I I want to blend this into our Bioshock Infinite conversation, but some of the degrees to the violence or like the you know the extra seconds that they would they would hold on some of her deaths like that was just like. I didn't see the point of it. Yeah. yeah. And um and it it just drew attention to it that I don't think that was intended. Um but um but everything else around like the 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 story, the characters and her interactions with 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 the story were I think gr- handled really well and I can't wait to continue more adventures with this Laura. Other than Me too. Me too. I have to I do you watch California Fornication? I do not. And I've said, I think I said this before, but uh, the voice. I've heard you say it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, um, you know, Laura's historically a uh, you know has is is as close to a video game sex symbol as there has been, and uh, yeah, the fact that the voice actress for her, uh, I I've, I've seen her naked on Californication makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> so, uh, but other than that, she's did a fantastic job. So it's just, I picture the actress sometimes, and that's not what the game intended. So that's a problem with me, not the game designers. <laughs> <laughs> um, but violence and Bioshock Infinite. So you, you, did you beat Bioshock Infinite? Yeah, I beat it with like two weeks of its release. Okay, uh, because who knows why the fuck I got distracted. I No, I know I got distracted finished. because it wasn't running as well as I wanted to on my new PC. And I refused uh, to turn down any settings, but... Did you finish it finally? Yeah, that was a mind fuck. Um, yeah, complete mind fuck. I've been through a lot recently with video games, so I've finished uh, very recently finished Brothers: The Last of Us, Bioshock Infinite, and we'll talk about this coming up. I also played through Gone Home, and I think there was another one in there. And then I'm dreading The Walking Dead. Video games have put me through a lot of shit. This yeah, year, that's a in the last crazy, year, crazy I am there. I am an emotional wreck, and um, Bioshock twisted me in a different ways. Um, and we will probably do a spoiler cast yet on the ending, so I want to I will avoid that stuff. But it definitely left sure. its mark. Um, I will say that the gameplay in Bioshock Infinite is amazing. It is great. The storytelling in Bioshock Infinite is amazing. It is great. 
mashed together, I think they weaken each other. Does that make sense? Mm. Yeah, that yeah. I never really looked at it like that, but that I can see that. It's um, just because of the way, like that storytelling. I think it could be served so much better, mm-hmm. maybe just a third person game or just different a different style. Like I don't know. If, Bo- both both of me, them like, for, for, held each other back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because there's certain things you can do in a first person game story wise that you can't. Or gameplay wise, you can't do it in another game style of game, but then you can do that story wise. Yeah, I, yeah. But they're but it's still. Yeah. God damn, of, that game was violent too. Holy shit. That's that. So that was the, oh, the violent side of that. Like I still, while I appreciate video game violence and intense gore, and it has its place, and I was cheering on Booker every time I drove a sky hook into a dude's face. I didn't really understand the degree of the violence, like. It's still, it's still it's felt a little bit off, like, in that world. It yeah, just... so the first time, the first time, you know, you really kill somebody is, like, you know, you could choose to throw the baseball at um, the guard or whatever. Right. In the, in the beginning. And then uh, I was like, okay, this is going to be, you know, whatever. I throw the baseball at the guard because, well, I'll get into that in a second. But, yeah. Um, then the sky hook, you know, you grab the guy's throat and then pop his head off, and I'm just like, "What the fuck is going on?" Like I did not, ex- <laughs> yeah. like you know, I'm in, this, I'm in this beautiful world. I'm listening to the Beach Boys, um, like by a barber shop, and like, oh, there's there's some racial things going on here. I don't like that, but I didn't realize I was gonna like maul <laughs> this guy's head off. <laughs> uh, and so, like, I think there was a good juxtaposition of that mm-hmm. world with the violence for sure. Um, because it was... It just... And I was all for that. It just... It never had its payoff. It never, like... And I never saw the underlying reason for it. And it, it, it just stuck with me looking back on the... Big, looking back on a great game, it's, un, it's like... You, you, you pick out its minor flaws. It's, it's unfortunate that that's for how... Sure. It's how brain... Like, people react to things. I feel like we're not alone in that. So, I mean, I don't even view that as being... You know, someone that does video game criticism. But it's just like... You're like you look back for okay, what held that back from perfection? And those were that was one yeah. of the things that kind of stood out. But I, I will say like the one one thing about that game that like I haven't thought about it since it kind of I thought about it when I first started playing it is never have I felt so satisfied about killing the people in that town though. <laughs> like terrible people, especially like being in an interracial relationship. Like it hit closer to home than I ever expected a game to. But so it was like really satisfying to to uh, on, just kill those dudes, you know. On on that end, though, the storytelling side, I had no I had no issues with that. Like I thought I thought right. it brought up very very smart discussions and should make you feel uncomfortable, and they and handled it incredibly well. And I thought they made really smart decisions with the way it was uh, portrayed, and um, you know, it was it was not meant like the whole. You know, Columbia's meant to be a utopia, but it's obviously a terrible, terrible place. So, right. um, yeah. that was, uh, that was, that, I think that'll stick with me. The story will stick with me more. Uh, I wish I had played it through on a hard because playing it through on normal, like, I didn't, I didn't use the tools that Bioshock Infinite gives you. I didn't, like, set up traps or do elaborate stuff elaborate sky hooking i just on normal you can just blow through dudes and it's kind of surprising that 70 percent of that game um with as many awesome enemy designs as it has 70 percent of that game is just shooting dudes with guns yep um and uh so that's that like i said that's where i feel like the story and gameplay kind of held each other back had they just made straight up sandbox shooter with all these tools and not try to tell the story i think it could have been phenomenal and just from a gameplay perspective and had they not tried to tell a story through first person shooter in this world, they could have even done even more amazing things with the story, but all said and done, you get to the ending and how everything wraps together, just mind blowing. And it will linger in my linger in my memory forever. For sure. Definitely. Um, gone home. Play that, stream that whole thing. Yeah, that, I played that one sitting too. Um, 
Yeah, that thing is a. Uh, I. <sighs> it's, so hard, play- it's hard to articulate the feelings about it. Honestly, for me, is like I really like. It's a fucking without, achievement. <laughs> yeah, without <laughs> without seeing characters and basically listening to audio tapes and reading, like you know, like. Basically, read the like Fox tapes or whatever that's in Bioshock. Mm-hmm. You like, you figure and seeing reading letters and all that stuff. You figure out what's going on with this family, um, and you become really attached yep. <laughs> to that daughter. Mm-hmm. And and yeah, I figured out what was what her situation was pretty early, mm-hmm. but it didn't matter. Mm-hmm. Like I still wanted to find out how it was resolved. Yeah, and was, how like the whole the whole family was like. I mean, oh god, dude! The brilliance it's of it. It's amazing. Yeah. The brilliance of it is just looking at the story. The pacing of the story is driven by the, how the house is designed and how you go through the house, and there would be so many ways to fuck that up. Um, but I just I kept wanting to explore. It kept driving me like even playing through. Amnesia recently, which some of these first-person horror games that we've been I've been playing, like story is a big part of those, and pacing is where like Outlast broke down, and even Amnesia had its moments, right. and especially Machine for Pigs, and then I look back last year's Dear Esther, um, kind of another story-driven game that the pacing was a little bit flawed, but that that's what Gone Home nailed, and they they told a story, an interactive story in the most interesting way I've ever experienced, and. Um, it, it it and the story itself was just really touching. It just uh, I thought I again I thought I knew what to expect from that game. I was like, oh, nineties nostalgia. That's why you all like it. It's a big part of it, but it is um it it will be looked back on uh, for for its storytelling devices um for a really long time, and I think it could be. In a group of games, it is a very transitional moment for storytelling in 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 games because they're trying to evolve. They're trying to, um, you know, change what you can expect from first person games and 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 stories and games in general. Yeah, I you I, said it. <laughs> I, I, so I I just played that Monday, so it's still lingering. Oh jeez, yeah. So um, yeah, I played it a couple months ago, uh, but yeah, like. That's the first game <laughs> where I've I kind of had the I've done this that's happened to me with movies before. It was the first well, the Bioshock happened with Bioshock too. So the first game where I just sat there after I was finished and just like thought about it for 20, 30 minutes. And it's also the first game I've ever said, Gar, you need to go in and play this right now. Yeah, like because she she likes those kind of adventure games. So um, with that style. So I think she hasn't played it yet. Um, she doesn't listen to me very well. Mm-hmm. But um, I've never had that reaction I'm trying to th- any any game or anything like that. I don't think Megan would have the patience to play it, but I'm trying to think if I can somehow like, put that on the big TV and play it for her and if it'll hold her yeah. attention. Because I, I just think it's a it's also just a, a beautiful story. So Yeah. Um, yeah, that was a that was a big surprise. I'm glad that that. So I've been just going through this list of things I have to finish or play before before the end of the year. Uh, was there anything kind of stick out you, for you? I can't believe you played that Bioshock and then Last of Us like basically back to back. It was um, I I really enjoyed what I played I, for Last of Us, but I I haven't finished it yet. And without spoiling the story and gone home, I thought it was going to go to places that were just going to emotionally wreck me. Like after, yeah. like I said, I've been through some video game shit this year. Like my favorite, like <laughs> the end of the last two hours of Last of Us, I was just yelling at the game. I was just like, "Fuck you, <laughs> video game!" <laughs> and uh, I thought I was going to have to play that. So, yeah, it's uh, it's been kind of crazy. Um. Yeah, anything you want to still try to get to, or are you kind of resolved in, in, in your games of the year at this point? I mean, I don't think I have a t- 10 list, top 10 list, but um, I'm pretty... Man, I, I wish I could have played some more Devil's May Cry after hearing you talk about it. Uh, I have it, I just haven't... I haven't Problem is... I haven't played past the first like stage. Really. It takes its mm. turn for the awesome about stage 4. Yeah. So... Coop experience though, so he'll have my back. <laughs> um, 
Let's see. Did Dishonored come out this year? No, that was last year. It was, was end of the year last okay. year, yeah. Um, did you play any Blood so, Dragon? Yeah, I didn't really like it. All right. Uh, I like the setting and everything. It just seemed like, I don't know, Far Cry 3 seemed more interesting to me than Blood Dragon. Um, That's next on my indie list, I've got to play The Swapper and Risk of Rain. So those are coming up. I've heard The Swapper is really good. And I've got Annie Chamber after the show tonight. Um, let's see. I would highly recommend oh. you play Valda's Story. Uh, Valda's Story? Yep. Yeah, it'll Your Castlevania fandom will is that is that on steam it is on steam um how do you spell that v-a-l-d-i-s oh, that's it that's it yeah abyssal city yep holy shit let's see what else that looks I done pretty here? yep that looks really cool um i played a little bit gun, oh. a little little gun point enjoyed that much more yeah, of a like puzzle gunpoint. game than i expected yeah um, I played this game called Anodyne. Yeah. Um, it's very, um, uh, it's very like old school RPG. It came out back in March. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, that is a, th- that is a this year game. Yeah. It's like pixel art, um, like Final Fantasy looking kind of game from like Super Nintendo. Mm-hmm. It's really interesting. Um, I haven't played a whole lot of it, but. Did you, Soundtrack's really good. Do you play any papers, please? I did not. That seems stressful to me. <laughs> it is very stressful. <laughs> <laughs> um, I still need to play uh, XCOM, Enemy Within. I, I do too. I started playing it, and I just... Ethan said we you don't need to finish the the other one at all. Just jump right in. So I trust him in that. Did you did you play Rogue Legacy? I think, I think you did. Uh, I, I love Rogue Legacy. Okay. I love it. It's one of my favorites. Um, I'm trying to think what else I've picked up here recently. I'm getting, I'm running out of time, so it also just doesn't matter. I need, still need to play. Um, yeah. I want to go back and play Call of War as Gunslinger. Coop played quite a bit of that. That was above. That was better than expected. So, um, I think that's about about it. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything else for me. Really. Cool. Cool. But yeah. Those are like I would say. I have a feeling Brothers is going to be there. Um, Bioshock Infinite, Tomb Raider. You didn't play Last of Us. I played like. Uh, what's the older? I don't want to spoil anything, but what's the older lady's name? Yeah, I know where you're going. Yeah, yeah, I got to that point. Okay, that's nothing. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, I know it's nothing. God, the game hates you. Um, yeah. I, and I hated it, loved it. Holy, um, if you, it's a, it's a longer game than I expected, but if you, I would highly recommend dumping oh, some. Man, I got some time, I got some time this weekend. Dumping. I can't believe, I just looked at the, I just looked at The Witcher 2, I can't believe that game came out in 2011. Yeah. Right, yeah. It's so, it looks so good for 2011. You know, during your half-naked alone time, video game time this weekend, I, you might consider the last of us i know you've got some pc games you're working on but yeah and i'll probably end up playing 2k14 the whole time (laughs) sports man i'm talking about yeah sports video games all right or some link between worlds well cole it's fun catching up with you man thanks for uh, definitely breaking it down and uh maybe we'll see you on the grimmies which i would like to announce uh we've just confirmed we're gonna do um, our live Grimmies deliberations and um, award handouts. What a, that's a terrible name for it. Um, but we're actually going to live stream our deliberations. Last year it took about eight hours. It's going to be between six and eight hours, if I had to guess. Uh, starting on January 4th. That's a Saturday. Um, probably around noon Eastern. I'll, I'll release some more details. But it will be an assorted crew of Horrible Night members uh, breaking down all of our categories from best digital butt to uh, game of the year, and uh, some new ones, some old ones. We'll we'll see where we where we end up. Hopefully, no blood will be shed, but there will be at least a handful of us will be in the same location, so it could get it could get interesting. So, um, and then be on the lookout. I think I'm going to do a check in like this with uh, 
Justin Gifford coming up as well. We haven't checked in with him for a while. And then we'll get our personal games of the year list out before the end of the year and uh, kick off 2014 with a massive Grimmies discussion. So that's where we're headed. Um, for the Curse Checkpoint and HorribleNight.com, uh, we will uh, see you again uh, next week. And we'll talk to you then. See you guys.